Hello there. Today we're going to talk about arithmetic sequences and series. So for, for this first little bit, I just want you to like watch and pay attention. Don't write anything down. Just I want you to just see a couple of little examples. All right. So I have pictures of two patterns here, the penguins and the puppies. So look at the penguins real quick and see if you can see what's happening in terms of adding or subtracting. All right. So probably you've looked that there are two penguins here, then this changes to four, and then this one changes to um, seven. So if you had to think of an adding pattern to go with that, you'd be like, oh, I think here they're you know, adding two, then they're adding three. So maybe the pattern would be, oh, let me add four. So if I had to do peng penguins, I would have 11 of them, right? So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 10, 11. All right, and I know there's maybe other things that you recognize, but we're just trying to think of things with adding. All right, so take a second and look at the puppies. So when you look at the puppies, you notice they're adding two. Then here, again, it goes from you have one, then you have three, then of course you have five, then you have seven. So every time they're adding two, all right? And so if I continued on, I'd say add two and I'd get nine of them, nine puppies, all right? All right, and so that there is what we're interested in. We're interested in adding patterns or subtracting patterns that do the same thing every time. So it's called that they have a common difference. Like the difference between each group of puppies is two, whereas the difference between each group of penguins changes every time. So it's like not the same common theme every single time. All right, so still just keep watching. So let's delve into these puppies a little bit more. You see I have one, then I have three, then I have five, then I have seven puppies, all right? So some things to notice here. How did you find that change? Now in your mind it was easy. You were like, oh, it's just going up by two every time. But I also want you to notice this, that any time you take an item and you subtract the one before it, five minus three, oh, that's two. Or seven minus five, that's two. That right there is called your common difference, and we're going to write that down in a minute. All right, so you your mind just kind of does it with these easy problems, but in case you ever need to do it with a harder problem, you take any term and you subtract the one before it. Now, obviously, you can't take this term and subtract the one before it because there's nothing there. So you can't use the first term. You have to use, like, say, the second term minus the first term or so forth. All right, so any term minus the one before it. All right, and then something else to notice here is that this guy right here, this is the first term, so that's what you start with, okay? And um, so that's gonna be called A1, the first term. So when we write that, we write A sub one like that. Now the, um, the math space uses the letter T instead of A, but you'll be fine. Usually you use A, I don't know why they use T. Anyway, um, so let's do a little problem right here. What if I had to figure out the 43rd group of puppies. So if I had to figure out the 43rd group of puppy, in my mind, I'd be like, well, um, you keep adding two. So I could keep going and doing this because this is the, the first group, the second group, the third group, the fourth group. So I could keep doing it, you know, a bunch more times. Um, let me see, 39 more times, I guess. Or I could use like a little equation, all right? So if I want the 43rd group, I know I'm starting with one and then I have to add two how many more times? So if I start with one puppy and I add two, so one puppy is my first group, then I have 42 more times to add that. So add two 42 more times, that'll be the 43rd group. And look what you get, one plus 84. So there'd be 85 puppies in that group, all right? So I want you to notice this. This is A1. This is my common difference. And do you notice how I asked you for the 43rd group? That was the number of groups. So this right here was the number of groups minus one. So that's gonna come up on the next page. All right, so 
let's go and now here on this next page here I want you to start writing some stuff down all right so write that title down arithmetic sequences and series this is in unit 8 this is day 2 that we're doing okay so let's start off with some numbers here so my first example is gonna, I'm going to use for this information is going like this. It starts with 12, then 16, then 20, 24, and so on. Now remember, um, what we're doing is called an arithmetic sequence. So an arithmetic sequence is when arithmetic means you're adding or subtracting, because remember, subtracting is like adding a negative. All right? And a sequence is just a list of numbers that um, follows a pattern. All right, so we're doing an arithmetic one. It has to be the same pattern every time. All right, so let's do this. Uh, my first term, A1, is 12 here. My D, D is called the common, ugh, common difference. So think of it as like the pattern. And to get the common difference, you take any term, not the first one, but you take any term and subtract the one before it. So let's do 16 minus 12. So 16 minus 12 is 4. My common difference, oh, this is going up by 4. You can probably tell that in your head a lot of times. All right, but if it's fractions or decimals, it gets a little bit harder. All right, and then I need a way or like a formula for what's going on right here. And so that's gonna be called AN. So it's basically the name of any term, but in a formula way. N is going to be the number of, um, the number of terms or the, like if you're doing A5, that's the fifth term, that kind of thing. And here's the formula, A1 plus N minus one times D. So you should recognize that from the last page that we did. All right, so remember A1 is the first term, N is the number of terms, and D is your common difference. So let's come up with the formula for what's going on right here. So my formula is called AN, A sub N, but remember in math space is called T sub N. It's gonna look like this instead, all right? All right, so um, it goes like this, A1. Well, A1 in this place, in this um, uh, sequence of numbers is 12 plus, you leave N minus one there because you want a formula. You want N to be in your formula and your common difference here is four. So you guys should know that that's a distributive property right there. So we're gonna multiply this out and clean it up. So AN equals 12, four times N is plus four N and 4 times negative 1 is minus 4. So when I clean that up, I get um, 4n plus 8. So that's a formula for any term that you want to find. So let's say somebody asks you to find, I don't know, why don't they ask you to find the 50th term? So a50. So if you went and kept going, 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 going here and found the 50th term, this would be another way to do it, but faster. So all I have to do is plug in 50 for n, and I get 200 plus 8, so that would be 208. So there is the 50th term, all right? So let's do one more thing, one more problem like this that's kind of basic. So let's say, for example, we're given this um, pattern, 5, negative 3, negative 11, negative 19, and so on. And I want to find a formula for this, and then I'm going to tell you a certain term to find, all right? So let's see, A1, A1 is 5, that's the first term. D, my common difference. So remember, I can take any number that's not the first number and subtract the one before it. So I'm just gonna do the first two. Let's do negative three minus five. So negative three minus five is negative eight. Oh, this pattern is going down by eight every time. And yeah, when you look at that, you're like, oh yeah, it's going down by eight because it's getting lower and lower and lower. So let's find the nth term. So the nth term, remember, is a one plus n minus one times d. All right, so let's do that here. So a n equals, well, a one is five, Plus, remember I leave n minus 1 right there. Now, the common difference here is negative 8. So when I put negative 8 like that, it makes me feel like I'm going to subtract. So I probably want to put some parentheses around that, because remember, it is a multiplication right here. All right, so let's do it. Clean that up. I have 5. I want to multiply this out. This time it's negative 8n, so this plus right here becomes a minus. All right, so it becomes minus 8n, and then negative 8 times negative 1 is plus 8. So when I clean that up, usually you write the n part first, but I would get negative 8n, and 5 plus 8 is 13. Or you might see this written as a n equals, maybe somebody puts a 13 first, and then minus 8n. Okay, either way. 
So now I want us to find um, the tenth term. So if you kept doing this a few more times and you got to the tenth term, what would it be? So that would be a10. So I could just plug it in, negative 8 times 10 plus 13. And so you see it's way easier. Because what if somebody asked you to find the hundredth term? You don't want to keep like, you know, doing this a bunch more times. That would be irritating. All right. So I get negative 80 plus 13. So that becomes negative 67. And that's the tenth term. Okay. All right. So now we just have one, another little type of problem, um, still with sequences, but just one more little thing that could happen or that you might be asked. Let's say you have this pattern, 20, 15, 10, 5, 0, negative 5, and so on. All right, and um, you can see it's going down by 5. The first term is 20. All right, so this is my question or my statement. The nth term is negative 100. So the nth term, that means there's, there's some term, like if you keep this thing going, 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 you're going to eventually get to negative 100. And I'm going to ask you to solve for n. Okay, so what is n? So I'm basically asking you, is it the 20th term or the 30th term or the 22nd term? Like what, how many terms do you have to go to to get negative 100? So let's use our formula. The formula for the nth term is this a1 plus n minus 1 times d. Well, I want to get to negative 100. So that right there is my nth term. a1, I see it right here, 20, plus um, n minus 1, I don't know what n is, so I'm going to leave n minus 1 alone. And my d, remember, I'm going down by 5 every time. So it is a negative 5, but remember, I'm going to put parentheses around it to kind of protect it. All right, so we're going to solve this up. So negative 100, I get 20, this multiplies out to negative 5n plus 5, and I just have a basic equation to solve. The negative 100, I'm going to combine like terms, my 20 and my 5 make 25 minus 5n. So now I'm going to subtract 25 from both sides. So I get negative 125 equals negative 5n, divide by negative 5, and I get um, 25. So it must be true that when you do this and you get to the 25th term, it is negative 100. All right, so that's the answer to the question. All right, so the last little bit right here, we just have a, a couple more things to do. And this, is, this next little bit is going to be an arithmetic series. Now remember, from the last video, a series is when you do a sum of the terms in a sequence. Okay, so recall that what we did in the last video, you had this little weird symbol, remember, that is a sigma. It's called sigma notation. And what it means is that you're doing the sum. Okay, it's a Greek letter for a capital S. So another way to write the sum or another like thing that represents the sum is this, S with a little N down here. This means the sum, not psalm, sum of n terms. All right. So when you have um, an arithmetic sequence, an adding sequence like we've been dealing with, you um, there is a formula for it. So Sn equals, and I'll uh, explain these pieces in a little bit, n over 2, parentheses, a1 plus an. All right, so if you have a pattern that follows an arithmetic sequence, you can find the sum of the sequence. So that's adv advantageous sometimes. All right, so um, let's uh, look at this, these pieces right here. Remember n, that's your number of items that you're trying to add up. A1 is the first term, and AN is the last term, okay? So, um, you know, like let's say you have uh, all your puppies or whatever, you know the first first term is one, and then um, by the time you get to um, after, uh, let me go back to that page, 
so your puppies. So remember, we said to ourselves, oh, um, there was one puppy to begin with, but by the time we got to the 43rd group, there were 85 puppies. So I want to say to myself, how many puppies altogether is that? You know, if you take one plus three plus five plus seven all the way till you get to 85, how many puppies altogether is that? And so it's for a problem like that. Okay, so let's do an example. So my example here is going to be, um, I have, let me go to the next page. I have this arithmetic sequence that goes like this. So there are eight terms in this arithmetic sequence. All right, six, and it goes on, and it ends at four-thirds. That's the last term. So I'm telling you there's eight numbers in there. And um, so if you keep, it looks like it's going down. So if you keep subtracting the same number over and over and over again, um, you eventually get to four-thirds. So this is all you really need to know. Because remember, your formula goes like this. N over 2. Well, there's eight things, so it'll be 8 over 2. A1 plus An. So that's first term plus last term. So I'm doing the sum of eight things. So when you have an 8 there, that means you put 8 here. A1, the first term, well, there it is right there, 6. Plus this right here, since this is an 8, this is going to be A8. So there's the 8th term. So 4 thirds. Okay? So you grab your handy dandy Desmos or calculator or whatever you have. So this is a four, and then I have six plus four thirds. All right. So let me grab my calculator, four, and then six plus four thirds comes out to 29.3 repeating. So if I make that into a fraction, you can use Desmos if you want, um, I get 88 over three. So there is the sum. That would be the sum. So this is, you know, 29.3. Okay, all right, so my next example here is going to be this. If you're given a formula, find the sum of the first 20 terms of the arithmetic sequence with this formula, a n equals 2 n plus 5. So basically, this is a sequence like this. If I plug in 1 to this formula, I get 2 times 1 plus 5, so I get 7. Then if I plug in 2, um, I get 4 plus 5, so that's 9. And if I plug in 3, I get 6 plus 5, that's 11. So you can see, oh, this is a pattern. You're adding 2 every time. You're starting with 7. But you're given the formula. That's going to be key here. So let's do our, our um, you're given this formula right here. So let's do our sum formula. I'm doing the sum of 20 things. I would do n over 2, so it'd be 20 over 2. A1, so here's the first term. Plugged in 1, so that would be 7. Plus, now, I'm doing 20 things, so I need a 20 right here. Well, that's easy. All I had to do is plug 20 into my formula. Well, 2 times 20 is 40, and 40 plus 5 is 45. And there we go. So this is 10, and this turns into 52. So I get 520. So that's the sum of the first 20 things, 20 items in that pattern. All right, and one last little example. I know you're getting tired here. Um, if Remember, you have these things, these uh, summation notations. So let's do an example like that. And this is kind of an easy one. It's only five things. But let's say this was your formula. Okay? All right. So remember, you always have the option to do this. When you plug in 1 into this formula, so if I take 1 and plug it into my formula, I get 4 times 1 minus 1, that's 3. Then I take, I have to go all the way to 5, so I plug in 2 next, so if I plug 2 into this formula, 4 times 2 is 8, 8 minus 1 is 7. Then I can plug in 3, 4 times 3 is 12, 12 minus 1 is 11. And you can keep doing that. So you can do that 5 times and then get your 5 numbers and add it up. Or we can use our sum formula, my SN. So n over 2, a1 plus a n. All right, so n. Well, I'm going from 1 to 5. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, that's 5 things. So this is going to be 5 over 2, the sum of 5 things. a1. Well, a1 is when I plug 1 into this formula. Well, I already did that over here, and I got 3. 
A-N. Well, that's the fifth thing. Remember, I'm supposed to stop at the fifth thing right here. So when I plug 5 into that formula, I get 20 minus 1, so that's 19. So it's probably a little faster to do it with the formula than like figuring out all the answers, because really you only got to figure out two answers. So 5 over 2 is 2.5, and then 3 plus 19 is 22. You put that in your good old Desmos, you get 55. And there you go. The sum of the first five terms is 55. And that is it. I'll see you later.